Hello, welcome to another toneless landscape oil painting demonstration. This is your painter in residence, M. Francis McCarthy, and the painting I am bringing you today it's called Van Dyke's Path, and that is because it is featuring the pigment of Van Dyke Brown from Gamblin. And I'm going to talk a bit about Van Dyke Brown. You may have seen the uh, previous video to this where we did a little um, like color test of Van Dyke's Brown. Really awesome color, very pretty. And um, I did read a little bit from the Wikipedia um, which was, you know, scant information. So one of the main components of Van Dyke's Brown was uh, from the Wikipedia is uh, Cassiel Earth or Cologne Earth is a dark brown color named after the painter Anthony Van Dyke. Originally made from peter soil and applied as uh, watercolor and oil paints. The pigments made by confining asphaltum like black with iron oxide. This repli replicates the color of the original iron oxide rich earth. And so I was like, ooh, hmm, what's the original look like? Well, if you go to natural pigment site, you can buy the actual pigment, but pardon me for the sniff there. What I'm reading about here is that it's not actually very light fast, so um, it might be fine in an underpainting or some aspect, but what you're going to get is a color shift from the original. So this is why Gamblin. Uh, just I went over to the Gamblin site. Uh, they have a color called Asphaltum, which is basically another of their hybrids. This is Bone Black mixed with Mars Red, which is another one of these iron oxides. The Van Dyke Brown is a bone black mixed with some different uh, Mars colors. <coughs> Pardon me. All of the Mars colors are 100% light, light fast, and I have to say I really enjoyed working with the Van Dyke's Brown. Um, I enjoyed how it had very little red in it. It had some red in it, or it wouldn't have been perceived as a brown, but... <laughs> In a lot of ways, it's kind of like um, raw umber, um, except darker. So um, I'm going to have it on my palette. I'll be playing with it. Now, this particular painting I'm sharing with you today, I ended up getting really involved in the, um, the drawing slash underpainting process to the degree that I decided to let it live as an underpainting, <laughs> uh, as a complete painting, just in the tones that it is. And so one thing you may have seen at the beginning of the video is I actually toned the bit of um, masonite with raw sienna, and uh, that was really pretty, and it re definitely gave me some warmth um, there. And that slight bit of opacity in the raw sienna lent itself. You can see I'm actually daubing a little bit on there to cover up where my grids were. Um, the grids on this uh, were useful for placing that tree after that. Uh, I got rid of them because uh, that was the end of their usefulness. Also you'll note that um, I have that diagonal thing coming down. I ended up lowering that a little bit uh, when I decided uh, where I wanted to place the horizon line. and. Um, yeah, glad I did. You know, you have to uh, know when to change up your reference, and that really comes from, uh, you're going to hear, <laughs> if you've been on the channel any time at all, you're going to say, oh, here comes the broken record. Yes, yes, sorry. Um, if you want to paint, you must do a lot of paintings. Otherwise, you won't really know uh, when doing something is a good or bad idea, you know. Um, there's, you could be very uh, good at copying photos, or you could be very good at copying the paintings of masters and things. And in the, in the case of um, even like say that um, painting I did after a pictorialist uh, recently, um, he's already turned that photo into something that's very painting-like, which means that much of the detail was uh, subjugated and um, the composition was definitely worked over very carefully. But um, in your your usual photo, I mean, there's going to be compositional problems. It's rare that any photo will present you with automatically awesome composition. It, it does happen, and it has happened for me. 
and in that case, uh, you know, big big bunches of that photo are going to make it into the, um, the the final painting. You know. Um, anyway, uh, DV, you know, uh, I just I have to hit that. But I know I get new um, subscribers uh, every day, several actually. So I always want to make sure and point that out because. Um, now, and don't let that stop you from doing paintings. The solution is, I think, to do. Pardon me, a little bit of pollen in the air here, so I got a little bit of a sniffle. Um, the real solution is just do a lot of lot of paintings, and one of the solutions I think is to work small. Don't work exclusively small, though. Make sure you throw a good sized one in there now and again, uh, so you don't get uh, you know hung up on scaling your work up. But the fact of the matter is, is you can cover a lot of ground um, in a hurry with small paintings and learn a lot of the things that you will only learn through experience, like what's going to work and what's not going to work. So in this particular scene, there was just, you know, as usual with any, almost any scene involving trees, there's zillions of branches and zillions of leaves and it's really a matter of simplifying things the other thing is you can see that lighter tree in the background I actually reversed uh, how it was in the reference the tree trunk was actually darker and the foliage around it was lighter and I inverted that because because um, it worked better and um, this is the kind of thing. So, uh, you know, just going off inspiration, imagination, and experience, and intuition. And how do you train your intuition? You w really, there's only one way to train your intuition, is that is by giving yourself a lot of experience so that um, as you're, um, you know, skipping on down the lane as a painter, um, metaphorically, <laughs> uh, you'll get these promptings. You go, mm, no, I, that doesn't going to work. It didn't work last time, remember? Oh, yeah, yeah, no, I remember that didn't work. What else can I do, you know? And try something else, and maybe it'll work good. Maybe it'll be yet another painting that's got a problem that needs to be fixed later, or uh, it could end up being a painting that's just, you know, not good. And that's okay. Those paintings, you can... Um, you can cover over the top of them with uh, uh, one of the things that got me into painting over really dark uh, textured boards was uh, just going over old paintings with a uh, 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 just coated them with burnt umber because I needed something dark enough to um, to cover what was there and didn't want to be distracted as I tried to put a new painting over the top. Also, I really you know enjoyed the texture of the painting underneath when doing a new painting and that's what got me into the texture and stuff so good things come out of bad things all the time you just need to relax you know and not get so that's the other thing I would say uh, you know uh, it's natural to want to start an enterprise like um, a painting a career or something and want everything to be excellent of course you do I mean why would you want to do anything substandard but the fact of the matter is is that you are going to and uh, you're going to do quite a lot of work that is substandard um, the real key is don't get so hung up on it early on um, early on just do things work work fairly quickly do a lot of paintings some of them are gonna be much better than others I recommend keeping those maybe get some little frames for those put those up so those will encourage you and the really bad ones destroy them <laughs> or paint over the top of them you can forget about them because all you really need from those is the experience of having done them yeah and you know another thing like uh, this this painting was looking like I'm thinking wow this drawing is getting pretty tight and then I started working on some stimfato type strokes and I'm like, there's no way I'm painting over the top of this. I'm just going to let this be a little monochromatic painting. And then truly, well, yeah, I don't know. It's a, it's, it's a duotone, really, because you have the color of the board and then the color of the, um, the Van Dyke's brown, which is so pretty, so nice, isn't it, really? I mean, I just was enjoying it. And it's it's lovely how dark it is, you know. Um, but it's not completely black. Um, and why is it so dark? Well, because it has bone black in it. 
Um, I did do so. Yeah, getting back into the because I know we hey, 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 hey. we've lost the the casual folks a little while back. Um, I heard that, Denny. Quiet. I don't know what he's barking at, but he's he's bringing us down. Uh, yeah, so I went down the asphaltum rabbit hole because I saw that it was a constituent um, asphaltum-like black with iron oxide. Yeah, the modern pigment makers. And, you know, I think in my video where I was uh, breaking down the color, you know, my first reaction is I'm reading the ingredients on the gambling tomb saying, this isn't Van Dyke Brown. And technically it's not. Yeah, if you go to natural pigments, you'll see what the actual pigment looks like, and you would just add some some oil to that, and you'd be painting right off the bat. It's rich, it's black, it's brown, it's exactly the same looking as this color from Gamblin. So, um, yeah, sorry about that in the in that video because I, I was a little harsh on Gamblin. I feel bad. You know, they just want to make a paint that's going to be. Uh, light fast and this 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 earth is called gilsonite um, asphalt you know it has a lot of uses industrially um, just not that great for paint so uh, and you might go well geez Mike I mean with all this information about pigments it's like yeah I I don't get too too tweaky about it uh, I mean also I did I did some research about light fastness because I wanted answers went to wet wet canvas you know and I got uh, a whole thread about it and oh it actually just keeps going I didn't even know I won't waste your time with it but I will research these things and um, for me I think it's important to produce work that is uh, light fast I mean come on if you let's say you you you, you pulled out you pulled out a good one right you're gonna want it to last what, how, how does it feel to think that this excellent, excellent painting that you did, it's standing head and shoulders above the rest of your work, this painting that should be going through all of time, um, is gradually fading uh, with each day uh, and each a bit of exposure to light. You know, that's not a good feeling. So a little bit of, um, you know, industry when it comes to learning about your pigments is is important I think and and something you should definitely do and all you really need to do is look at the tubes of paint you're buying and there is always a light fastness rating just buy the best you know I I was using some uh, some uh, colors that actually turned out they really were light fast but they weren't being rated as highly as they should have been um, but I went through every pigment in my box about four or five years ago and double check to make sure everything I was doing was 100% light fast or I didn't use it. That's that simple, you know, and that goes for the good paintings and the bad paintings. They're all going to be light fast, yeah. Anyway, I can see we're getting close to the end here. Hopefully you enjoyed watching this uh, this nice little scene uh, come together. I think it has a really nice, almost etching-y uh, type quality, and so I decided just to let it be, yeah. Um, I was anxious to paint the scene again, though. I painted it once before as a 6x8, and I sold that about three or four years ago. That was on the textured board, so we might might take another crack at it. It's a full color. I had a bunch of things that I wanted to do that I ended up just saying, nah, we're just going to let it let the Van Dyke be the Van Dyke, and that's okay, because it's pretty. I'm so tempted to go in and just put some light color in that sky, but once I start doing that it, it'll just all go and um, that's fine we'll leave it be it's just it's a nice little 5x7 anyway thank you for joining me today really appreciate it go to my website you could buy a painting there or you can make a donation or you can join this channel as a member and uh, have access to some uh, a live version of this painting for example that's pretty cool not six bucks a month anyway until I come back with another video, do me a favor, take good care, stay out of trouble.